Welcome to Empowered. I'm Elizabeth Namofsky. Have you ever wondered where the term glass ceiling came from and what exactly does it mean? Um, it was actually coined by a woman called Marilyn Loden, a management consultant for the New York Telephone Company back in 1978. And the glass ceiling is a metaphor that refers to the implicit biases preventing women and minorities from advancing their careers. Now that phrase was coined 45 years ago, and believe it or not, it still stands. So to lead us through her personal journey and help us understand how to break through glass ceilings, I'm joined by Sandra Bonick, Vice President, Head of Operations at Mindshare Canada. Sandra, welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited to have you here because- I'm so this excited is... to be here. <laughs> well, that's great because we're gonna have a great conversation. Uh, the glass ceiling is such an important topic. And let's begin from the beginning and, and just walk us through your career progression up to this point. Well, um, when I first decided to, well, I always knew that I wanted to get into marketing and advertising. Um, I did my internship um, at a marketing firm. And one of the first things that they did was take me on, um, I guess it was like a creative meeting and I just got to be an eyes in the room. And they told me, just sit there, be quiet and listen. And at that moment, I was like, this is what I want to do. I knew I wanted to do this. I went to school, graduated got my first job in media um, in advertising as an assistant media buyer and that's how I started my career from there I just started to progress um, did everything that I could to learn and grow um, worked for some of the largest holding companies currently I'm at um, Mindjar as you stated and I've you know, one of the biggest accomplishments that I would say at Mindshare was getting promoted to the executive um, leadership role, which is a managing director. And the reason I think that's one of my biggest moments is because they that I am the first person they've ever promoted into that role um, locally. What they normally do is recruit externally for that role. So it was a big achievement for me, for and you. it was a big start for my career. That's awesome. Yeah. So. Like we've all faced barriers of some type. It, it, as, as women, it, we're constantly facing barriers. Like, what has been the most significant barrier in your career? Honestly, getting in. It was literally the hardest thing. Um, I went through a lot of interview process as part of uh, graduating. I actually graduated top of my class. And as part, our professors had a really good relationship with the ad community. And you basically got to pick which, um, if you graduated top of your class, you got to pick where you wanted to go. Um, I picked my top agencies, I won't name them, uh, went on my interview and it was a done deal. Like you pretty much knew you were gonna get your paid internship at these organizations, one of your top choices. Mm -hmm. That didn't work out for me. I went on like 20 interviews and never landed my job. It was the craziest thing. It was actually a bit unheard of. Um, I was broken, my spirit was broken. Because here I am, I graduated at the top of my class, I did everything that I should do, thought I was doing all the right things and still couldn't land the position. Um, and that's what I would say was literally my hardest moment and a real eye opener of what that meant at the time. Um, and I knew I was gonna make some changes. So how did you finally land a position then after all, you know, 20 interviews and nothing happened? When I finally got, I, I, I don't know, I just got, um, did the interview, uh, finally got in. And when I got in, one of the things that I knew, cause I remember the conversation with my professor, she said, um, that you're gonna be one of those individuals that once you get in, you are you will make a difference. And I re remember that and it registered with me and I knew that I was going to make a difference. I knew I was gonna work really hard, I was gonna sweat the details, I was gonna put in the overtime and I was gonna make a lot of personal sacrifices to succeed because I knew what happened to me should not have happened. It's funny because I actually never thought about this until 2020. Um, about my struggles of getting in. It's almost like I, I buried it, um, but I've been talking more about it because people need to hear it. What I've been doing behind the scenes is making meaningful changes to break these glass ceilings. So quickly, 20 seconds, what type of meaningful changes have you been making? Right now, I've, I've actually been going to um, 
public schools. I have a lot of friends that are in the educational system talking to young girls and just letting them know, regardless of your environment, um, people like me exist and I should be something that you aspire to. So just giving them Something to dream about, something to hope for um, is some of the things that I've been doing. Also, within the organization, I created the first ERG uh, for black um, employees to create a better experience. And we're going to talk about that. When we come back, we're going to find out what the first ERG is. Welcome back to Empowered. I am Elizabeth Namofsky. Today's show is all about breaking the glass ceiling. Now, Sandra, before we went to commercial break, you were talking about ERG, and I don't know what that is. So if you could please explain it. Yeah, for sure. And ERG is the Employee Resource Group. I created one, well, I co-founded one uh, with a few members of our company, and uh, we created one for the Black group, um, and it was called Candid, and they still exist today, and the purpose of it was really just to create a safe space uh, for Black employees within Group M to have um, a place where they can come to, convene, and talk, and share some of their challenges, and that's something that I'm really proud of. And was that due to George Floyd? Yes, it was. They, uh, the, the entire team just needed a, a safe place for the Black employee experience to have an outlet where they truly felt safe to to speak what they were going through during that time. I think a lot of people were going through stuff at that time uh, because it was it was just a, a horrific time and there was just so much going on. For sure. Um, I, I want to segue to leadership. Yeah. Because you know you were co-founder of of this uh, of this the, the ERG movement organization. Um, leadership is extremely personal. You know I'm sure you lead a little bit different than I do. Um, and I just want to know what you're, you know, how, how do you lead? Uh, is it very similar to females in your, in your firm or, or maybe some of your male counterparts? Um, or do you just, you know, focus and, and do it all on your own? So, no, I tend to leave with a sense of collaboration and transparency. I really like to bring my team along for the ride and have them have pretty much skin in the game as well. I've been known to be an individual that really sort of, goes under the hood, understands the client challenges, the business problems, et cetera. Um, and then I also have a, a great ability to parachute out. And the reason that's super important is because at that point, I know enough about what the problem is that I can easily delegate to strong people within my team to take it to the finish line. And I think that's some of the um, strengths that I have from a leadership perspective that I think does look different for different leaders because a lot of leaders have a real hard time parachuting out. And that's where micromanagement comes into yeah. play. Yeah. You know, it's interesting that you said you like to delegate because I read somewhere mm -hmm. that um, a lot of women who suffer from imposter syndrome want to have the perfect experience and don't want to delegate. They want to do it all themselves. Yeah. And I think that ends up being a problem for individuals um, because, you know, we need to surround ourselves with great people. For we sure. need to surround ourselves with smart people to get to that next level. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That is really important for me as well. I've always been a person when I'm recruiting, I'm usually looking for my weaknesses and trying to find the right person that can fill that gap for me um, or help me get better at something that I know that I'm not good at. But I do think that takes a little bit of confidence to know where your strengths and weaknesses are so you can build um, an entire community around you. Um, and that way, everybody is successful. Absolutely. Um, I want to step back and talk about uh, the impact of the pandemic on women in the workplace. Mm -hmm. You and I were talking about this earlier, yep. and you said that you had read a McKinsey report. Yes. Yeah, so I had read, um, so I think there's definitely going to be a setback um, in terms of women in, in leadership positions. I think before, although it was very slow, I think we were seeing a lot of progression, positive progression of women in leadership about a quarter. I read in the McKenzie study that at least one in four women have decided to either exit the entire workforce altogether or have taken significant decreases in um, demanding roles. And I think that's a bit concerning because when you start to think about where we were and this whole phrase of breaking glass ceilings, 
the, the reality of going backwards because women are taking a step back just makes that goalpost that much further. Um, so who knows? We, we could be talking about the breaking this glass ceiling another 45 years from now. Um, and I think I'll be that, exhausted by I know. now. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too, because it's a long time as it already is. But that was uh, one of the things that I read, and I was quite shocked by it and a bit saddened by it, to be honest. Well, it it. It saddens me as well because as women, not only do we make less than our male co- counterparts, we also live longer, mm-hmm. but we also have a disrupted career. Yeah. You know, women work, then they stay at home for children, then they're back in the workforce, then they stay at home for, for children, sure. then they're back in again, and then they have to take care of their parents or whatever. So it, it is disheartening and, and it's upsetting. However, we will continue our chat when we come back We'll have more discussion about breaking the glass ceiling. Don't go away. Welcome back to Empowered. I am Elizabeth Namofsky. Today's show is all about breaking the glass ceiling. Sandra, that's exactly what we were talking about and how women have come back, uh, moved backwards for all these years. Um, I want to move to the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Mm -hmm. Um, How does inclusion matter to you? Because I know it's a very personal thing for many people. And how are you championing this effort? Yeah, I think it really does um, matter. I think the conversations that we've been having up until this point has been very good and and super important. I think the conversations around um, systemic racism, um, the biases that are happening in the workforce, I think it has totally brought awareness. Um, And I think what we should continue to see more is changes in leadership um, and making sure that we are bringing um, a lot of those positive changes to how we structure our our processes, our hiring, recruitment, um, partners that we're leveraging, et cetera. Um, And that has been one area that has been near and dear to my heart. Um, I've been actively involved in terms of our recruitment process, even at my own um, company. Mm -hmm. And I I just think those are just things that we just need to continue to push the envelope on. What changes have you made? Um, one of the biggest things was making sure that we did not continue to look at uh, the same places that we were recruiting from universities and, and colleges, because when you start to look at diverse um, minorities, et cetera, they are not necessarily going to colleges and universities. So you, you tend to need to look at different outreach programs, going into schools like I have, um, empowering and finding other individuals to, to grow. At our organization, we also created this thing called Launchpad, which is all about um, ensuring that the right people are coming in who are new to Canada, um, who are coming from these um, diverse communities that get this opportunity to learn about our industry from the ground up. So there's just a lot of positive changes that are happening just simply because the awareness is out there. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just really want to make sure that I'm championing it to continue to go forward because there's still a lot more work to be done. Oh, absolutely. And Mm -hmm. and over the past years, and we've talked so much about allyship. Yes. Um, You know, the Black employee experience. Has this helped? Yeah, I definitely think it has helped because I think it's important to, again, just raise the awareness around um, systemic racism, um, some of the things that are just innate um, in our in our world. The challenge is sometimes I think we think these conversations are so global in nature, but truthfully, if you just look in your own backyard, you can realize that there's a lot of small little things that you can do, and those small things create real big changes. Um, again, like I said, the processes that exist in companies have existed for decades. They need to be adjusted to re- to reflect modern society and um, the diverse communities that actually exist. So I think um, those are some of the changes that we have to just ensure that we are championing going forward. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's probably some of the things I would say about that. So what's next then? I think what's next is just continuing to having these conversations. I think companies also need to continue to make these part of their annual goals um, and setting real 
KPIs that you can actually measure the success of what what it is that you're doing. Because I think some of the things that do concern me, as much as we've been talking about these things over the last three years, because we've been in such confinement, shining the light on what has been going on north or south of the border, border for us, I think as we get back into the real world again, I worry that it will fall off the radar. So this is why I think it's really important for companies to continue to make it part of their annual goals um, and just creating spaces, ERGs, what have you, and just continue talking about it. Okay, so we have less than a minute to commercial break, and this is a really big question. Uh, So as a Black woman in media, Mm -hmm. how has the media landscape evolved for Black talent? Uh, I would probably say what I'm seeing right now is compared to when I first started, there's definitely a lot more people that look like me, which I think is great. Mm -hmm. Um, But I, I, I do get a little worried that we're not just just the employee, making up the employee population. Yeah. I do think it's incredibly important that we see changes in leadership um, and that these individuals, these same talents, are getting the opportunity to grow. Um, and that's um, something that I think I'd like to see more of. Um, and uh, I think there needs to be programs to help achieve that. Okay, we'll be right back with more of Sandra and Breaking the Glass Ceiling. Welcome back to Empowered. I'm Elizabeth Namofsky. Today's show is all about breaking glass ceilings. I'm joined by Sandra Bonnick, Vice President, Head of Operations at Mindshare Canada. Now, Sandra, before we went to commercial break, I'd asked you this question as a Black woman in media, how has the media landscape evolved for Black talent? The reason why I'm asking is because we've seen some news stories of lawsuits that Black talent is not advancing. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason for that is that it's true. I think, like I was saying earlier, is that we're making up the population, the employee population, but not necessarily getting the growth opportunities. So as as much as there is representation, I think there needs to be changes in the workforce policy and being able to give um, more growth opportunities. I think more people need to have a seat at the table like I do, because that's truly the only opportunity where you can really affect change. And this is where I'm so excited to be in the position that I am because I do get the opportunity to have a seat at the table and voice some of those concerns because it's the only way you're really going to see some effective change. So I understand these lawsuits and they are real. And these are some of the challenges as to why they exist. You know, it's interesting that you said voice at the table because I just spoke to a group of like 20 high school girls in Europe, in the Balkans. And I said to them, you have a voice, Mm -hmm. use it, Mm -hmm. because you are our future. You need to be heard. And they were shocked when they saw me, when they heard me say this, because a lot of young women don't realize that they have a voice. Yeah, and that's true. And I think that is something that I realize. um, In the beginning, it's like one of those things where you're a little bit timid and afraid. Um, But then I just got to a place where as as soon as I started to rise that corporate ladder, I really started to challenge and ask questions and and be like, are you changing the policies on the back end of your algorithms that it doesn't create discrimination? Have you thought about that? Um, And those conversations has really landed well with some of the, the senior people of these companies that I have the pleasure to work with. But I do think it's really important to speak up, have a voice and be heard. I totally agree with that. Well, speaking of, what would you say to the next generation of female Black leaders? I tell them that they should be bold. I think that they should definitely, um, you know, hone their craft. I think it's really important for them to continue to educate themselves, learn, um, get training, read, um, and do everything that you can to stay ahead. Um, And I do think that they need to truly stay true to themselves um, and embrace who they are. Um, because I don't think you want to lose who you are just to succeed. You, you'll, you'll hate yourself later. Yeah, you know what? Those are, <laughs> those are great, great words. Yeah, you have to be true to yourself. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about you. What motivates you and what inspires you? 
Okay, so what motivates me <laughs> is having this opportunity to be able to create a positive legacy um, and just really being in a position to know that I am affecting change for the next group of young women, not only just young Black women, just women in general, and making sure that the challenges that I face they don't, the gaps are not the same. Um, and that I, is something that truly inspires me and knowing that I am creating a, a change uh, for the future is something that keeps me excited. So what advice would you give to young women entering media in about 20 seconds? I think that they should be bold. I think that they should continue to ask questions and just really be okay with asking the uncomfortable questions um, because I think that's when you truly get the most genuine, positive, and authentic response. You know, and, and I think you're totally on point. I always tell people, ask questions because my mother always said, if you don't know, if you don't ask, you'll never know. Mm -hmm. And you've got a voice. Use, use it. it. And then use it for good. Yes. Thank you so much for being here, Sandra. Thank you for having me. We've heard Sandra speak about her journey today. She told me that she's had an incredible career and she wanted to share her rise and challenges along the way. Sandra's goal is to leave a positive legacy and create opportunities for the next generation of people that look like her. She gets her inspiration from knowing that she's playing a role in creating a more equal and fair society. As women, we all have struggles that we're dealing with. Empowered was created to help you get through your challenges and get you to that next level. I'm Elizabeth Namofsky, and I'm here to empower you and make frugality fashionable. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye for now.